Welcome back to Motion Pick Recap. Today we're going to recap the adventure, action and science fiction movie titled, Prince of Persia. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Once, in the empire called Persia, the Persian king Sheriman ruled with his brother Nisam upon the principles of loyalty and brotherhood. Sheriman had two sons that gave him great joy, but the gods had more in store for him. One day, a boy called Bis causes a king's guard to fall off his horse. Taken to be punished, another boy called Dastan yells at them to stop and helps Bis flee. While Bis hides, Dastan tricks the guards to follow him across the roofs, but is eventually caught. As a guard is about to cut his arm off, the king suddenly appears. He starts talking to Dastan, and learning the boy's parents are dead, and moved by his courage, the Sheriman decides to take him in. Many years later, the Persian army reaches the holy city of Alamut. Prince Tus tells his brother Prince Garciv and his uncle Nisam that his father, the king, has made clear that Alamut is not to be touched, but since their wise father isn't there, the final decision rests with him. Suddenly, he asks if anyone's seen Prince Dastan. Somewhere among the soldiers, Dastan is fighting for sport, when a guard yells he's wanted for war council. Later, Nisam tells the three brothers their finest spy found Alamut is selling weapons to their enemies, saying they have to attack immediately to stop them. However, Dastan notes that if they attack, they will lose an awful lot of men before they penetrate the city's walls. Tus hears Dastan's wise words, but eventually decides to attack at dawn anyway to stop their weapons forging. At dawn, Princess Tamina of Alamut sees how the Persian army is attacking. Somewhere else, Dastan's friend Bis asks why they are doing this again, and Dastan explains they can avoid a slaughter if they manage to slip in through the side. Dustin climbs up the wall with his friend's help, and then helps his companions up too. Bis says there are two gates they have to open, and they form a quick plan. Suddenly a guard sees them and sounds the alarm. They start to attack, and while his companions try to fend off guards appearing, Dustin is trying his best to make his way to the inner gate. His men manage to take down the guards, and then wait for Dastan to take the inner gate before they open the outer. Eventually, Dastan takes the inner gate, and Bis runs out, signaling the army. Tus remarks Dastan has done it, and redeploys the army to the eastern gate. But then Dastan suddenly sees that the forces inside are redeployed too. He sees something and gets an idea. He ties a rope to a scaffolding, and then jumps down with the rope to down below, fastening the rope to a weight, and letting it go. The scaffolding with oil falls down, and Dastan throws a torch at it. Moments later, the Persian army arrives. Meanwhile in the castle, Princess Tamina picks out something, telling a soldier he knows what he must do. Dastan and his brothers are making their way to the palace when suddenly the soldier that the princess entrusted with an item appears. Dastan starts fighting him, and after some quick moves, the soldier drops the item. Dastan manages to knock the soldier unconscious, and picks it up, seeing it's a beautiful dagger. Nisam and the two brothers storm the high tower, and the princess tries to kill Garciv, but is stopped. Nisam demands her to show where they are forging all the weapons, but she explains they aren't making any. Dastan soon arrives, and she notices he's got the dagger. Later that day, when Tuss and Dastan are talking, Tuss sees the dagger and remarks its beauty. Nazim appears saying their father is arriving. In the castle, King Sheriman scolds Tuss for attacking Alamut without proof of Alamut's treachery, saying this won't suit with their allies. Tuss promises he won't stand before him before he's found proof of it. Later, Tuss sees Dastan on the streets. Tuss says they've found tunnels under the city and he'll go to investigate himself. To return the favor of giving him the city, Tus presents the legendary regent robe of Alamut to Dastan, which he can give to their father as an appropriate gift for the victory, and Dastan thanks him. Later, Dastan is escorting Tamina to be presented to the king, and they have a short sassy conversation. Dastan walks up to his father, and while hugging, Dastan tells him they've missed him. Sheriman says he was praying for him and his brothers, explaining the bond between brothers is the sword that defends the empire. Dastan then says he has a gift for him, and Sheriman gets happy for the rope. Tamina is then brought out and presented to him, and after she has said some bold things about how they've destroyed the city, Sheriman remarks she'll be a fine queen and says she shall be Dastan's first wife. Shocked, Dastan says he needs a drink, but then suddenly, something happens to Sheriman. Someone yells the robe is poisoned, and Garcev tries to help him, but burns his fingers. Dastan yells for anyone that can to help his father, but then Garcev starts yelling to seize Dastan who gave the robe. Bis tries to protect Dastan, but is pierced by a spear. Tamina runs up, telling him to follow her, and they jump out to flee. Dastan releases all the horses, and then takes Tamina with him on one of them. Garcev yells to close all gates, but Dastan and Tamina manage to escape. That night, 
Dastin tells Tamina he didn't kill his father, that the robe was given to him by Tuss, and Tamina remarks that Tuss now stands to be king. She gets close and says she believes him, but then tries to grab the dagger. Unsuccessfully, she reaches for a sword and starts attacking him. She manages to take the knife, but Dustin makes her drop it. He then goes for it, but as he accidentally presses the button on it, he starts seeing time reversing, and the fight between himself and Tamina. He's confused as he lets the button go, and this time Tamina manages to cut him. He presses the button again, and reverses time once more. Once it has ended, Dastin tells her he'll break her arm if she does that again, and she's shocked he's used up all the sand in the dagger and found out about the its power. Dastin then gets it, that the attack wasn't about weapons forges, but this dagger, saying with it, Tus could become the greatest ruler the world has ever seen. Meanwhile Tus has doubled the award for the capture of Dastin. Next morning, Dastin decides to go to his father's funeral to try and find Nissam, who's the only one he can trust. Tamina screams, asking if he's going to leave her in the middle of nowhere, and Dastin asks God to give him the strength not to kill her. Later, Tamina explains that the dagger won't work without the right sand. Dastin asks where he can get more, but she won't tell him. He sees something around her neck, and tells her to start walking. After a while, Tamina suddenly faints. Dastin runs up to her, but she just tricked him and grabs the dagger and runs. As Dastin wakes up later, he's surrounded by men. One of them called Shikamar tells him there's a tribe known as Mbaka, who are masters of the throwing knife. Their aim is so accurate that they can decapitate three men with one strike, saying this man called Seso, who he saved the life of and is enduringly indebted to him, is Mbaka. He asks Dastin if there's any reason he shouldn't tell Seso to throw his next knife just a little higher. Next, they catch up with Tamina, and stop her. Dastin asks for the knife, and Sheikh Amar says she looks fine and that he has a deal, making Tamina worried. They get to Amar's business headquarters, and before the two part, Dastin takes Tamina's necklace with sand in it. Worried, she suddenly reveals she's the guardian of the Divine Covenant, and that the knife was smuggled to safety when he took it, saying no one can know about the dagger. Dastin tells her he'll protect it. He goes out and sees Amar is running an ostrich racing business, which Amar is very proud of. After some racing, Amar calls on the girls, telling Dastin's their arrangement will work out well. But then Amar remarks he looks exactly like the disgraced prince that murdered the king, and Dastin immediately tries to flee. He's however stopped by Seso, and Amar comments the reward for turning him in is enough that he'd trade his own mother for it. Tamina sees he's in trouble, and lets all the birds out. Dastin quickly jumps down, and Amar yells at Seso not to throw his knife since he might hit his birds. Tamina causes another distraction, and together she and Dustin then manage to escape. Some time later, they find a caravan with people coming for his father's funeral. They take jobs to be able to sneak past the guards at the city walls. Once inside, Dastin sees his uncle Nissam, saying he's got to give him a message. Tamina remarks it will be impossible, but Dastin gets up and skillfully manages to climb down and make it unnoticed into the carriage carrying his dead father. He writes a message and puts it in Nissam's pocket. When he's back, he tells Tamina it was hard, but not impossible. Later that day, Dastin meets Nissam in the market, hugging him, and says he didn't kill his father, that Tuss gave him that cloak. Dastin then explains Tuss invaded Alamut for power, and is after searching for a kind of sand deep below the city that fuels a mystical device. Nissam asks if he has this device, and Dastin gives it to him, but inside is a nutcracker. Dastin gets upset and sees Tamina is gone. When he turns around, he notices Nissam's hands are burnt, and Nissam explains it happened when he tried to take the cloak off his father. Dastin starts thinking and asks Nissam how many times Sheriman told the story of how he got saved by him from that lion when they were young, remarking it was his favorite story. But then suddenly Dastin hears a bow, and starts running as arrows come flying. He runs out, where soldiers are waiting for him, and Dastin has to start fighting his way out. But as he's about to escape, Garcev appears, calling him a murderer. Dastin tells him he didn't kill their father, and manages to get away again, climbing up on the roof, where he starts running from archers and others that are following him. He jumps down into a building, where a lot of women are, and then manages to escape. Later, Nissam tells Prince Tuss that Dastin came to kill him. Tuss asks if Dastin is trying to get the throne, and Nissam says he thinks so, saying they should probably make sure Dastin doesn't come back alive. Tuss however wants a public trial, as he wants to honor the rule of law. A day later, Nissam arrives at the lair of the assassins, where he meets with the assassin leader to order an assassination on Prince Dastin. Meanwhile, Dastin is searching for Tamina. He eventually finds her, telling her to be quiet, that a Persian patrol is close. Dastin explains it wasn't Tuss that killed his father, but Nissam. 
Nissam had burned his hands, but since Nissam never touched the cloak to save his father at the celebration, he must have handled it before. He says Nissam has no use for going back in time a few moments, saying she must be hiding something more about the dagger. While waiting for a sandstorm to pass, Tamina explains the gods once saw only greed and treachery and sent a great sandstorm to kill mankind. But a young girl asked for a second chance, offering her life in exchange, and seeing the purity within, the gods swept the sands into a sand glass which is now underneath Alamut. The girl received the dagger and became the first guardian. The dagger holds one minute of sand, but if put in the sand glass, the sands of time could flow through endlessly, turning back time as far as you like, something that is forbidden. Dastin tells her his father Sheriman was once saved by Nissam from a lion when they were out hunting his boys. Nissam must want to go back and undo what he did, let his father die to be king himself for a lifetime. As the storm has passed, Tamina explains that if the dagger would cut into the sand glass, it could crack and once more carry the gods' wrath across the earth. She says it must be brought back to the mountain where the first guardian received it, where it can be destroyed. At a waterhole later, an ostrich appears, and then Amar with his men. They are caught, and Amar explains that what he and Tamina did when they escaped caused all but one of his ostriches to escape. He's extremely upset since he can't organize an ostrich race with only one ostrich, saying he'll need the price on their heads now. That night while they are sleeping, the assassins have caught up with them, and trained venomous snakes start attacking them. Dastin yells at Sesso to give back the dagger if he wants to live. Dastin activates it, and notes where all the snakes appear, after which he slays one after the other until all are killed. Amar is astonished he managed to kill them single-handedly. Next day, having agreed to let them go, Amar remarks it's too dangerous to be around them if assassins are after them. Dastin and Tamina ask them to help them get to the temple, but they refuse. However, as Tamina explains there's gold at the temple enough for 10 horses to carry, Amar changes his mind. Not long after, Garcev and his men find where they camp during the night, and somewhere else, the assassins are traveling fast. A day or two later, they reach the sacred village in the mountains, but then they find killed people, and Sesso says it's assassins doing. Amar comes running, yelling the entire village is dead. Tamina says she must quickly put back the dagger into the mountain, which will envelop it, but that the gods will have to take back the life they spared. Suddenly, Garcev appears with his men. Dastin tells him that Nissam is the traitor, and that Nissam has ordered assassins to kill him. Garcev sees the killed villagers, after which Dastin proves he's innocent by explaining he would not have risked going to father's funeral to talk to Nizam if he was actually guilty. Garcev then remembers Nissam saying he wanted Dastin killed instead of a public trial, and Dastin explains Nissam is afraid of what he has to say. Garcev eventually says he believes him. They hear sounds outside, and as Garcev comes out, he's hit by spikes thrown by assassins. They all start to fight the assassins. Dastin runs quickly to protect Tamina, who runs up into the mountain. Sesso retaliates and fights back. Seeing his master in trouble, he throws a knife to stop the assassin. Dastin has run after Tamina, saying he can't allow her to give her life for the dagger. As she's about to put it into the mountain while distracting Dastin, a assassin suddenly appears. While Dastin fights the assassin, a snake appears, which swallows the knife. Dastin takes the fight outside, and as he slips and the assassin is about to kill him, Garcev uses his last strength to save him. Before he passes away, he tells Dastin to save the empire. Tamina appears saying the knife is gone. Somewhere else, the assassin leader takes the knife out of the snake and hands it over to Nissam. Amar is happy that the villagers won't need their gold anymore. Sesso asks Dastin where he'll go, getting the answer he's going to Alamut to stop his uncle. Amar starts laughing, saying he's never coming along, but is convinced by Sesso to help. Days later, in Alamut, Tamina finds out from her loyal subjects that the Persians have broken through to the deep tunnels, and will reach the sand glass within hours, and that Nissam is keeping the dagger in the high tower, but which is guarded by a demon throwing spikes, saying no man can stand within 20 yards of him and live. Sesso remarks some men don't need to get that close. They trick some guards, after which Amar asks Sesso if he's sure about this. Sesso says he owes Dasan this for saving his life with the snakes. A while later, Sesso reaches the high tower, and is attacked by the assassin guarding it. They throw knives and spikes at each other, and suddenly Sesso is hit. He pulls the spike out, and picks up one of his throwing knives. He looks at the dagger and takes a deep breath, after which he runs for the dagger while throwing his last knife at the assassin. Sesso manages to get him, and makes it to the dagger, but not without consequence. He grabs the dagger, and seeing Persian soldiers appearing, stopping him from getting anywhere, he throws his very last dagger. Below outside, Amar asks rhetorically if he's told them about the Mbaka. Meanwhile, 
Nissam sees the dagger is gone and yells at everyone to find Dastan. Soldiers everywhere start following a man they think is Dastan, which turns out to be Amar having tricked them. Tamina tells Dastan to be careful, after which they make it to the castle. Nissam is trying to get Amar to talk, but unsuccessfully. The assassin leader suddenly appears telling Nissam they have found the sand glass, but Nissam says he no longer has the dagger. In the castle, Dastan surprises Tuss, making him order the troops to stay outside. Dastan begins explaining Nissam is behind all the treacherous acts, and tells about the dagger and sand glass. But Tuss doesn't believe him, saying if he's going to kill him, he should just do it. Dastan removes the dagger from his throat, saying this is no ordinary dagger, telling Tuss to press the jewel on it and he'll see, after which he stabs himself. While Dastan is falling to the ground, Nissam walks in, and Tuss yells at him to stay back. Tuss is devastated Dastan took his own life, but Nissam remarks he's glad the coward killed himself. Tuss says Dastan was no coward, and decides to press the button. Time starts reversing, and Tuss sees Dastan coming back to life. As Dastan is about to take his life again, Tuss stops him, saying he believes him. Nissam appears, seeing the two talking. Nissam quickly cuts Tuss's throat, and a assassin appears stopping Dastan. Nissam takes the dagger and quickly leaves. As the assassin is about to kill him, Tamina appears as a distraction. Dastan swiftly kills the assassin, after which Tamina sees he was a guard in the High Temple, finding out how they were betrayed. The two then take a secret pathway down the tunnels to get to the sand glass. While Nissam is lowered down into the tunnels, Tamina shows Dastan the path to avoid booby traps, but Dastan unfortunately sets it off. Sands start to move, and Tamina runs to the middle. Dastan however falls down and slides on the sand. He avoids falling structures, and then manages to jump onto a plateau. He takes a quick pause, but then falls down a trapdoor, ending up in the room with the sand glass. But then the assassin leader appears, and Dastan has to start fighting him. Meanwhile, Tamina makes her way down. As Dastan ends up in trouble and is about to be bitten by a snake, Tamina appears, grabbing the snake, making it bite the assassin, who Dastan then manages to stab. The two kiss, all while Nissam makes his way down. The two get to the sand glass just in time to stop him. But then some rocks fall from above, and they almost fall down. Dastan catches Tamina, who tells him to let him go, saying his destiny is to save the world. He says he won't let go, and so Tamina makes him lose his grip. Devastated, Dastan quickly climbs up and grabs the dagger just in time before Nissam releases the sands of time. The gods' wrath start traveling across the earth, but then Dastan starts pulling the dagger, and manages to pull it out. Moments later, he finds himself holding the dagger, and suddenly his friend Bis appears. Bis says the battle is over, they just took Alamut. Dastan starts running to his brothers and uncle, yelling out for all to hear that they have been deceived to attack Alamut by one they trusted about all else, their uncle Nissam. Nissam says Dastan has lost his wits from his hard fighting and the burning sun, and people laugh. Dastan continues saying the supposed spy that found the weapons was hired by Nissam to make it all up, turning to Nissam saying he'll never be king because he lacks the heart, making Nissam angry. Dastan then turns to Tuss, asking him to do what's right and listen to his heart. Nissam then walks up to him and tells Tuss that Dastan has lost it and is telling lies. Tuss tells them the spy knows the truth, yelling to his men to find the spy. Nissam understands he won't walk away from this and he and his men draw their swords and start attacking Dastan. Skillful as he is, Dastan takes them all down and throws down his uncle. Dastan tells him he had everything a man could ever dream of, but that it obviously wasn't enough for him. As Dastan spares his life, Nissam tries to stab him, but Tuss appears stopping him killing Nissam at the spot. Next, Tuss begs Tamina for forgiveness, having been tricked to attack her city, saying it would be mutually advantageous that their nations are united in marriage, between her and the man who's both the conqueror and savior of her city, Dastan. Saying he had no time to prepare a gift, Dastan gives back what's already hers. They take a walk, and she asks how she can trust the man who just breached her city. Dastan says he's found a new destiny for his life, which she finds a bit weird since he just attacked her city and had a very short time to change, but he asks her to give him a chance, saying he looks forward to the day they have learnt to know each other. The end. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and hit the like button to help us out. Until next time, take care.